Welcome to Wayne's Weird World. What are you doing, Gus? Get the ball. Get the ball. Yeah. Drop it. Oh. Oh well. You don't want to cooperate? Well, I have to glue that again. Choose. A very, very warm summer day here in the greenhouse. 29 degrees Celsius. Right. Once it gets over 30, this is uh, it's like an oven. Bleach. Rubbing alcohol. Anything that you can use to clean, clean what you're doing for cutting. The downside of the bleach is it's an oxidizing agent and uh, it will make things go rusty. But um, yeah, make sure you have everything clean. If you, for if you forgot, do it again. All right. Cymbidium repotting. Now, I've got one up here that's just finished flowering. This one finished flowering quite a few weeks ago. That's the first thing you have to do. Cut those things off. Make sure you have your labels. Do not lose them. Do not forget them. I've got plastic on the uh, greenhouse floor because this gets messy. And then there's this one which I'm going to have to be even more careful with because look at those beautiful, beautiful new growths on them. You don't want to break those. So if all goes well, I won't muck up. And uh, let's see how well it goes. Most people end up getting somebody to help but um, you can often do it by yourself without too much trouble. Now, this is what I'm looking for. Nice, healthy growth. And then you see the dark one. Oh, that's firm. Mush. Now, the mushy ones, I don't cut them all off because when I put in potting mix, oh, that's broken down. Look at how broken down that is. It's just soggy. I strip the outer sheath, don't break them all off if you can avoid it, but strip off the outer sheath and uh, that actually is going to give it some, some uh, anchorage in the new potting mix. And I'm going to use fairly, oh, really mushy. And uh, clean all that muck out. Yeah, I'm going to use the coarse mix on this one. And uh, some people just go in their hollow bowls and just chop away. You can. Some people do. No harm in that. But um, these little fibrous bits are going to help anchor it. So I'm not going to do all of that. Yeah, I might just leave that because there's other little bumps on there. Whoop. Broken one off. Those are all firm. Mush. Mush. And uh, gets a bit messy, so I pity you people that have uh, a kitchen to work in. <laughs> Lucky you! When I'm finished, most of this muck is landing on the uh, on the drop sheet. Well, I can just turn the hose and uh, blast away. I think this is alright. I'm not going to tease away. I'm not going to do any cutting on the sides of that. After I finish uh, repotting, I'm going to go along and peel off a lot of the outer dried sheath. Ooh, that's a nice growth. Could have, could have bumped that one because I wasn't paying attention. See, I just peel them away, like that, and uh, clean them up that way. But uh, I'll do that later. 
Otherwise, you're going to get bored silly while I'm standing around doing all this. Okay. That's ready to go. Now, make sure you have a large enough size pot. This one's going to be for the smaller of the two. The only reason I put newspaper in the bottom is so that a lot of that stuff doesn't fall through the holes. It'll rot away quick enough. So, fair game. The larger the orchid, generally, the coarser the mix. And this is uh, nice chunky, nice chunky stuff. Large pine bark, large bits of charcoal. There's uh, pea gravel in here. Some uh, medium pine bark in here. And uh, there's some horticultural sand in here. Mm, yeah, that's about right. Horticultural sand. Yep. I'll lift it a little bit because I don't want to go down, I don't want to drop it down too deep. And I want the orchid that way because the new growth is on this side. So I'll fill that side first. A lot of people put them in the middle of a pot. Try and figure out which direction they are growing. Because think of them like a rhizome, and the rhizome is going to grow in one direction. Okay, that's a bit better. Lift a little bit. I've got my handy dandy oversized knitting needle, but uh, that piece of bamboo that I use I like a lot. Because, can I reach it? I've done my back the other day, so moving around is really uncomfortable. And I could have spent the afternoon watching, watching DVDs and drinking beer. Good idea! But I thought, nah, do something constructive. And then Fred popped over and thought, why not? Let's do it. Okay, with the uh, knitting needle, it's just a little bit wider where the bamboo gets into the corners and that little gap between the pot and the orchid a little bit more easily. I'll fill it up a little bit more. Messy, messy, messy. Fred said he's never, uh, he'd never potted up a, a cymbidium before. So when he was over at this, uh, his friend's place, he's a retired orchid grower, and uh, they did 30 or 40 of them. Fred must have just sat around doing nothing, twiddling his thumbs, I'm sure. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right, that one's done. Labels back in. I will write on them the uh, the repotting date, but I'm not going to do that right now because I've got to get onto the other one. Oh, when uh, when I did my back. It was bending over, cutting a blackberry stem smaller than that, with this, no heavy lifting, I can lift my own body weight when I get my rod on tractor stuck, but I didn't. Let's do this over the drop sheet. I don't know what's going to fall out, let's give it a whack. Woo! Wee-hee! Oh, these are in better condition. I like this one. 
This one hasn't been sitting around going all mushy for a long time. And you can oftentimes smell it. And if you if you take the, any potting mix and squeeze it and it just turns into mush, like uh, fresh cow pats or something like that, or mud that the kids are going to be making their little um, mud pies from, you know it's been left too long. So I'll clean that up a little bit. See, most of that, sh most of the sheath has been taken away. But see, there's when you're doing it, try and do it carefully because there's another one. These two bigger ones are easy to see, but it's the little ones that you may not notice, and they're just going to be a little bump at the base. There's a little bump there, but I can't. Nothing's. Nothing yet. That one could be another eye. So, uh, take it easy. Don't fall over and break something. I don't, don't want to lose my label. Mad magic crossed with floor bundum. Yeah, mad magic it is. Okay. Where'd I put the pot? <laughs> Hiding. again the coarse mix. I won't be able to put a lot in there because this some people will pop them up to the point where the the crown is way up above the edge of the pot and uh, yeah that will nestle down nicely. Maybe a little bit less take out of And again, I'm moving it way over to the side because this is where the new growth is. So that's the way I want it to sit in the, in the pot. One of these days I'm going to get another sim video. Trouble is, I mucked up the video on uh, the other sim video. And it was planted in pony poo. Horseshit! But um, when they've been planted in, uh, potted up into coarse mix, you can always go over to using uh, pony poo and, uh, and fines. But if it's been planted in pony poo, horseshit! And you want to, and they go back to coarse mix. They're not going to be happy. And they end up uh, setting them back quite a way, quite a ways. So, if it's in horse, horse shit, keep it in horse shit. If it's in uh, a conventional potting mix. You can go either way. That's pretty tight on this side of the pot. Yep. Sometimes it'll settle a bit more after you give it a good whack or two, but I think that's good. See, I don't want that sitting down too deep and I don't want the potty mix coming up up over the uh, the base of the of the, uh, the back bulbs. So I think that's good. I think we'll leave that one as is. Put mag magic back in. We'll label them with the date later. And that's it. Repotting Symbidiums. I was looking around to see if I had any that were desperate for dividing and uh, I thought no but if you're going to divide them try and keep them to at least a couple of good strong growths and a couple back bulbs so if I was going to divide this 
if, which I'm not, I'd probably be dividing it there. Sometimes you wiggle them and they just naturally feel like they're going to come apart at that spot. This one, don't know if I was going to divide it, which I'm not, I'd probably go through there. But I like big, proud plants. I don't like little tiny prissy things if I can avoid them. That's it. Repotting the symbediums. Cheers. Wayne's Weird World. See you next time.